Hello, it is I, Lufendai, and welcome back to Ducky Ducky Ledger Club. <laughs> yes. Another uh, game. Uh, why are they black? Uh, uh, not me. Not me. Ah, uh, I haven't either. Oh, yeah. That's a bit unusual. Hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just. I have something to do today. It's very popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I'm gonna be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry. I'm super sorry. Ah. Uh. Oh, there you are. I don't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Quite, quite strong-willed. Quite. Yeah. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah. Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Uh huh. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell, at least. I must have not heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, uh, pardon me, one sec. Alexa. Set alarm for two. Alarm set for two a.m. Thank you. Of course. I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. I play piano. Piano's one of the instruments I play. Ah, uh, God damn it! I hate. Uh, I I did change the keyframe setting, okay? I did. Oh fuck. Um. Well, the the recording's gonna be good anyway. Uh, I always want to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's. Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I mean, that sounds cool. I look. I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Floof and Die. I won't let you down at all. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Uh -huh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I really have the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. Oh, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not not really. I chose to leave out Saori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It, it looks like everyone was all ready to settle down. Saori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yori is back to her book and Natsuki just burned into her closet. Oh, uh, fine. Excuse me. Uh, let me be right back. If, if I can fix it while still keeping the stream, I will... Oh. It's uh, back to green. What is... Uh, what is with YouTube? Yori's back to your book. Okay. Oh, black screen. Fliff and die! Fliff and die! Sorry, suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival's coming up? Me and Monica are gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Oh, are you going with Foof and I to get supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Aw, oh, but I wanna go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. 
<laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Okay, I'll find, I'll find all the poster paper. Okay. Ready to flip and die? Yep, let's go. Sorry and I exit the club room. I flow up. I hate you. I follow behind as Sorry hums and skips around the hallway. Oh, whatever. I follow behind as Sorry. I follow behind as Sorry hums and skips around. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sorry finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. So do I. Finding pleasure in simple things is a is a magical thing. Hey, Sori. What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. All planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite the fair. No. No. Ah, that sounds kind of dull. Kind of dull. But if you die, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like, you say the lines of the poem like, Between my feet, the stinky touches. The last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Huh. Like that! Sorry. How do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's possible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh? You meanie? I'm working super hard on this, you know? Uh, I know, I know. I just meant that's pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. Uh, don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Ah, uh, so excited. The festival's going to be so much fun. Sorry, spins herself around the hallway again. Hey, Flip and Die, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission of stealing all their supplies. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I spent time with Sorry like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine drawing happy vibes from the world around her. Oh, spring is here and my allergies are coming back. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see, we have... <clears throat> Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Yeah! <clears throat> Crayons! Yeah! Crayons! Oh my god, crayons! Sorry, he pulls a box of full... Mm, sorry, he pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too. They're coloring crowns. crayons. Crayons? They're kind of dirty, though. Sorry, he starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. All right. <clears throat> All right, that's one down. Don't get distracted. We still need to find... Wait. I'm looking for my fair color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, uh -huh, I dropped my uh, I dropped on by accident. Smack. Gah! Sorry, bends over and smacks your forehead right into the shelf. Ow. Kill me, Mark. She falls to the floor and the crown spill all over her lap. Ow, 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 ow. You okay? My forehead. Sorry, clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sayori. It's just like you, isn't it? Oh well, let me see. Sorry. Since Sayori's sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. 
Oh, that's a cute picture. Zoe slowly releases her hand from her forehead. Oh, that's a pretty good grounds. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Oh, sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. Yeah, but she'll be okay. A bump is starting to form as well. Ooh, she really did hit her head hard. Damn. Man, it's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Come and die? Where would I even find ice around this time? Well, maybe, maybe school cafeteria? Ah, uh, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even one thing from the pain story makes a silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Oh, okay. I pat Sorry on the shoulder and run out to the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. <laughs> what should I get? It doesn't really matter since it'll be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. But I know Sorry likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sorry. <laughs> Still on the floor. She has one palm over her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they, at least they are already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sorry, here. I hand sorry the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sorry opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sorry, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sorry places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it, it'll feel better soon. Looks like you've cleaned up most of the crowns, so that's good. Hey, flip and die. This kind of reminds me you of growing up, doesn't it? Uh, what do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of, you were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like, I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I try to do things, I couldn't. I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape my scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really... Did I really do that? Yeah. I don't remember? Come to think of it. Maybe I do remember. Um, come to think of it. Maybe I do remember a bit. Do get, do get, do get. Thank you very much. Okay. Bad. Bad. You, you. Just go right there. I guess I was always so focused on my games. I didn't pay enough attention to you. So... In a way, it is my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Flip and die. I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. D don't call me that. And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Flip and die? I'm so glad that nothing changed between us. Oh, I'm so glad too. Your ribbon changed. You have a nice red ribbon. Oh, that's always been like that. Do you think... It'll be like this forever. I do. Our, our friendship is is a beautiful thing that will last forever. Forever. If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? 
I can't imagine you ever changing, but my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sorry, as a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside. That when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. This so far is a really, really touching episode. I, I love this. I this is this is Okay, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um if anybody's actually watching this. See, please use keyframe frequency of four seconds or less. Currently, keyframe or not be shown. Right there, it's right there. Just... I don't want to worry. Excuse me. I don't want to worry, Monica, you know. Good luck with that. She's gonna see her forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Sorry, hops to her feet. Ha ha! She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Ugh. Well, I guess it's too late now. <laughs> well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. Uh, this is so far really cute. I like that. I follow Sori out of the classroom. Sori plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back. Good timing. I was just about ready to start with sharing our proms. Eh, sorry, your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about. I was playing with crowns and smacked my forehead into the shelf. Wow, she just, ah. Uh... Really keep that secret, did she? Uh, uh, well, anyway. Be able to find everything we needed? Uh huh, I have it right. Eh. Sorry, frantically glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff. Calm down, Siori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work for the day. Ah, uh, well, Siori. I failed to come up with an excuse for Siori. I made an adventure. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too! Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crown box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Okay. Oh. Who should I choose? Uh, who should I choose my poem first? Um, I guess Monica. Hi again, Floof and Die. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. All the stuff I write is a masterpiece, okay? Ah, it's moi, ma masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Hmm. Alright. Yeah, this was the poem where I just, like, decided to go do 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 Uh, so it was, like, it was sort of a really random poem. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sori, like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I, I am not shy, it's just... <laughs> just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But you and Aski are super interesting people. So don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Oh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah... I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. <sighs> but anyway, want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. <clears throat> Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Oh, uh, 
Okay. Sorry, uh, repeat. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, and endless. Oh, symphony. Uh, sorry. Mm. Of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Oh. Cool. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of a thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poems. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what poems is about isn't the right question. A poem can be an abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's right tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You're not allowed to break the fourth wall. Okay? No. 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 Don't break the fourth wall. You never know when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected happens. Wait, is this even a tip? <laughs> Wait, is this a tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Oh, uh, sorry, Natsuki. Oh, shit. Uh, sorry, I guess. Yeah. So if we die, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Eh, uh, I'm not hiding anything, but, but your poems are so good. Yesterday's, and this one too. You can't t tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so. Eh? Sorry. Eh? No way. Not even Nosuke? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh? What, what, what? Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even little things. Like cooking. Oh, like cooking! Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feeling through you than I can through myself. We have... We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand... You never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey, I'm not kidding, no. Are you sure about that? Hmm, maybe. Sayori starts filling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Floof and I, will you, give my will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because... Sorry. Well, it's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> Sorry, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <sighs> Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Ah! I broke my pencil. Sorry, hastily bent this down to pick up the pieces she dropped. But being inattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. S Sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk beside her to support herself, knees shaking. I... I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> let's... let's sit down, Sayori. 
Yeah, yeah. I grab Sawyer's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I like it. <laughs> Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put in a little bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles all in a row. A collection makes me lots... Mm. <coughs> Sorry. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams, friend after friend, more bottles, deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time could elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friend looks through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up, and in one... <coughs> Sorry. Finally, all done, I open up, and in come my friends, and they come, and in such hurry, they want my bottles that much, I frantically pull them off from my sh- mm. I frantically pull them from my shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something, but all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Oh, sorry I made mistakes that, uh, dyslexia. Oh, uh, but... What I, uh... Okay. So this is, like, what, so far one of the only poems I can kind of get a feeling for. It's like, um... I, th I think it, like, has something to do with trying to make your friends happy. Which isn't always a bad thing, but it's trying to make your friends happy by making yourself unhappy, miserable. It's like, it's like you keep on doing things, nice things for your friends over and over again, over and over again, but there are some times you're not really filling up to it, and your friend's like, no, we want you to keep doing this for us, please, please do these nice things for us over and over again, and it gets kind of draining, draining. Then again, I may be completely wrong. Holy crap! Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really touched my feelings recently. And I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm not... <clears throat> Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good. So you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing till I die! <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. Sorry. Sorry's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. Yeah, that's pretty much me too. I mean, I, I don't. Yeah. I wonder if that's. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes make it hard. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Uh, I guess Yori. Why not? Sure. Hello, Yori. Let's see what you've written for today. 
Hmm. Well done, Flip and I. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yori. Coming from you, that. <clears throat> ah! I get my voices mixed up and I actually do voices, you know? C coming. Coming from you? That means a lot. Eh? It, it's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poems to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down, th down the things you see in here. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have um, well, example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yori nods and timidly hands me her poem. Uh. <clears throat> The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread with a gu- The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of the raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious, well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The exciting beauty of my cutting knife was the symphony. I have that symphony. The bread, my hunger. <clears throat> the bread, my hungry curiosity. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon. An urge. The moon. Increments its, the moon increments its place and reflects that much main, main light of off my cutting knife. Sorry, the, the, uh, cursive is mm. the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I am merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. It could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my head is always handy. Uh, so my hand is always hot. The raccoon becomes hungry and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I relinquish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. The rush of blood, classic pavilion conditioning. A p pal val pal yeah, pal yeah. I cannot say that word. Sorry, I know the word. I just can't say it right now. Conditioning. I slice the bread and I fill myself again. Oh. Um. I was a little more daring with that one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. Metaphorical? Yeah. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. I mean, I do. I'm not really going to say that. That's right. It's a bit close to my preferred writing style. Using the poems as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions to them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in more unusual hobbies. What unusual hobbies do I have? Um, white clay sculptures, I guess. It's kind of unusual. It's those sorts of things. I'm. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So. So I may sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing and people make fun of me. D don't you have anything like that, Floof and Die? I mean, technically, yes, but I'm not saying what they are. Well, 
Yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everybody has a little something like that. The best way we can do is respect each other and our indiv individualities. Even if it is difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. Pavlov. Oh, that's what it was. Pavlov. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Oh, that's good. Who should? I, oh, I wonder who. Should I just choose the last option? Should I? Should I? Okay, I'll choose the last option. Hmm. Well, well, it's not really worse than your last one. I can't really say it's any better either. Phew. Huh? Huh? Phew what? Ah, oh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, hey! What makes you... Wait. Maybe that was a compliment. Now, are those, like, supposed to be, like, her inner thoughts or something? Yeah, it's probably just her inner thoughts. Uh... <laughs> Glad to see, glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing, and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. I shall never be as good as you, Almighty Master. You are the greatest poet writer in the universe. That's uh, something tells me Nasuki completely missed the point. Come to think, come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sori's poem from yesterday. Eh? You think so? Yeah. Well. I guess if you've been, been friends with her for so long, you might be the same wavelength. But you never really stuck me as her type. Sorry, has a type all of a sudden. Well, I don't know, but honestly, you can... I don't know, but honestly, how could someone so er, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, we would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh, yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. It gave wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. So why am I not friends? <clears throat> That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite s love song. Every time she sang the chores, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words, but she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy held me up and took me to the nurse. I, tr I try not t to let her touch me, but she likes spiders. Uh, <clears throat> touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are up are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has has a lot of friends. I always see her tiny people, but she's probably talks about spiders. Whatever her friends are like spiders too. That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world's better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone Everyone about the spider lover. I like spiders. Spiders are cute. I mean, yeah, some bite, some don't. Some are friendly, some are assholes, but you know, spiders. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was too short. It was just, I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with such simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone who would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... <clears throat> that doesn't matter. It can't be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're really afraid of if people find out. They make fun of you or think less of you. But 
That just makes people stupid. Who cares what, what someone likes as long as they're not hurting one and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. That is very true. I mean, 90% of the time, depending on the weird thing, you know. But in this scenario, if you like spiders, like spiders. Go ahead. <laughs> That's funny. You already wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yori? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, you're always pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not like I would judge or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I, I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff, I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And you always made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learning her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that? I'm gonna write a good poem. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit in the front of the room. I'm more of a sit in the back of class kind of person, you know, and. One second. Sorry. No. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. Well, we'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a uh, that's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't need much more than a few decorations. Siori has been working on posters and I've... Siori's been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets so we can find out... we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, oh, sorry. I, uh, thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? But, um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poetry site during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Siori is putting it all the posters in the case. Siori is putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare, prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Siori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well... No, not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Im imagining it, Yori shakes her head in fear. Guys, no, Siori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yori have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. 
It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlook that. So, I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, they'll be an inspire. <clears throat> then it'll inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone that what literature is all about. Yeah! So expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And so it's reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yori remain silent. Sorry looks forward. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them a little bit, out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... <laughs> looks like Natsuki, uh, looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get, o get it over with. Alright! Whew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yori? Yori dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expected faces. <sighs> I... I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! You're the piss, Yori! This club is seriously... This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh! You'll be fine, Yori. But anyway... Let's move on to the main event. I want each of us to choose a poem of yours. We're gonna be, we're gonna practice reciting them in front of each other. No, 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 no way! Monica? This is too sudden. This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poems in front of the club, how do you expect to do in front of strangers? Uh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the sp specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to play emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before? Or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Zori looks amazed. Yori has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finished her re recitation. Ugh. All right, the four of us applaud. Sorry. Yeah. <gasps> Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you so much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Siori? I, I'll go next. Ah. Huh? Yori's fired up all of a sudden. Yori clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yori anxiously glance glances at each of us. You can do it, Yori. It's... It, it's called... After an image of a crimson eye, Yori's voice shakes as she starts to read the poem reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? 
As Yori gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yori gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twisted churns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. Mm. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yori keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she finished. Everyone is stunned. Yori snaps back into reality. Mom's spaghetti. Pumps are sweaty. I got them mixed up, but who cares? And glances around her as if she bewittled even herself. I... It, it's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Very good, very good, very good. Very professional, very good, yes. Everyone joins me afterwards. And we give Yori the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yori holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yori, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yori is down for the count. I would too. Like, you might see this confident, sexy self of me, but truthfully. If I was doing this in actual public, I'd shit myself. Well, not literally, but figuratively, you know. I guess I'm next, then. Siori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah, <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Siori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How do you guys do it so easily? Ah. Uh, I don't think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting to yourself like in front of a mirror or your own bed. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sorry begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made out of a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Siori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this one on pa on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Story's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Story meant when she said she likes her likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Story finishes and we applaud. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. I did it. Good job, Story. <laughs> even Fliff and Die liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them. Depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just so embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Nasuki? <laughs> don't make me go before food and die. <laughs> It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. I swear let Flume die lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to do it. That's a key. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. Yeah. Poor cute girls. Staring at me? What are you ready to read? That would make me a little bit awkward too. I recite my poem. Since I'm not really exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Wait, am I applauding myself? Nah, who cares? 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it too. It, don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that will improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki progressively gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This po the poem is called. It's called. Why? What? Um, Alexa, stop. What? Why are you all looking at me like? What? Why are you all looking at me? And unfortunately, um, uh, the stream's not over yet. Anybody's watching, but uh, I do have to put it into this to this playthrough. So I'm out of time for this video. So we'll have to uh, listen. Well, we'll have to read Natsuki's poem in the next video. So, I thank you for watching. Have a gloriously fabulous day and see you in the next video. Goodbye.